That's right, Americans. We had a rebellion, too. Two of them. We're cool. And they didn't really, really work. Well, sort of, but... Eh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to History Abridged. It's history, just shorter. Today's lesson is on the Canadian rebellions of 1837 and 38. Didn't know that Canada had a rebellion? Well, strap in, or don't, because it's really not that exciting. Before we get into it, I'll give you some historical context. Canada was split into two provinces, Upper Canada, which is now Ontario, and Lower Canada, which is now Quebec. Yeah, I know that Upper Canada is actually below Lower Canada, but it's like based on the flow of the river or something. I don't know, it's weird. Shut up. The British still controlled the provinces, despite the fact that Canadian parties actually held majorities in both assemblies. The real power was held by elite cliques, made up of British sympathizers, rich people, that sort of thing. They had this system known as patronage, where people would trade votes for jobs and influence, etc. In Lower Canada, they were known as the Chateau Clique, whereas in Upper Canada, they were known as the Family Compact. Other tensions included, Lower Canada was mostly French, so it goes without saying that they don't really like their English frenemies too much. It was also an economically difficult time, which is never a good thing. After the War of 1812, there was a resurgence of nationalism, as the threat of American invasion was very, very real. Not to mention that this was the age of revolution, with the American and French revolutions being relatively fresh in everybody's minds. Now, onto the revolutions themselves. In Lower Canada, the revolution was led by a man named Louis Joseph Papineau, who had, for years, peacefully opposed Roman Catholic rule and the British governors. He wanted the province to be able to control the money they made within their borders. He also wanted responsible government. His requests were repeatedly denied. He led protests against the British, which eventually turned violent. In November 1837, there were a series of battles and skirmishes between the rebels and the British. The Canadian rebels lost pretty quickly and their leaders, including Papineau, fled to the US. A year later, there was another rebellion, this time with American volunteers. It still didn't work. After the second defeat, the rebellion just kinda fizzled out. When all was said and done, about 325 people were dead. Pretty much all of them rebels. About a hundred rebels were captured, and some of them were hanged. So yeah, that one didn't really turn out all that well. And it really wasn't all that violent, was it? Like, only about 300 people died. Well, wait till I tell you about Upper Canada. What happened there? I don't know if it can be actually classified as a rebellion. In Upper Canada, a newspaper owner named William Leon Mackenzie was fed up with the family combat. He wanted responsible government, just like Papineau, but again, his requests were repeatedly denied. So he gathered up a few hundred of his buddies and marched on Young Street. They exchanged a couple bullets, and the rebels started to disperse, presumably apologizing as they did so. A couple days later, there was another attack, but it too was dispersed. Like the leaders in Lower Canada, Mackenzie fled to the US. Eventually, he was pardoned, and he returned. So after these two battles, what was the body count? Three people. Three people died. That's it. That is literally it. In Canada, that's a rebellion. In America, that's a Tuesday. That was kind of pathetic, right? All that fuss. And for what? Well, it actually managed to come to something. The rebellions made the British pay attention to the colonies, so they decided to take a closer look. They sent a politician named John George Lambton Durham, better known as Lord Durham, to become the Governor General and find out what the Canadian colonies needed. He published the Durham Report, which is one of the most important documents in Canadian history. Durham recommended that the provinces be united as one, simply known as Canada, though each province would still be a province within one nation, one would be called East and one would be called West Canada, but at the very least that made more sense than Upper and Lower Canada. It was also recommended that the province be granted responsible government, which appeased the radicals. It also recommended the assimilation of French Canadian culture, but we don't like to talk about that, but let's move on. So there it is. Canada rebelled, and it sort of kind of worked. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave them in the comments. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. This is History Abridged.